saw what happens when I apply shear stress. Now we will see what happens when I remove shear stress or we can say it as time dependent rheology. So in case of time dependent rheology we are going to study about exotropy negative exotropy bulges spurs here we are going to show about thixotropy negative thixotropy bulges and spurs and also we have P of X e. now we will see about thixotropy what do you mean by thixotropy as the definition says I can say definition like in 3 years if you see the 3 years film I can say the definition has Chatur says the definition it says Isothermal and comparative slow recovery of a system whose consistency is lost upon shearing. What do you mean by this? So to simplify the definition, you can don't there is no need of batting definition. Understand the concept, you can create the definition. We'll see how to do that. Okay. Thixotropy, it says we'll we'll take the example, we'll see the mechanism and we'll create the definition and also we'll write the graph. Okay. Example for thixotropy is our pseudo plastic system pseudo plastic system what is the example under pseudo plastic system that is polymer in water when you add polymer in water what happens assume what is flowing we have imaginary layers when you add polymer in water, this polymer will go sit between the water molecule, oh, sorry, between the layers in the water. This polymer will get swell. It will absorb water and it will get swell there. Now, due to swelling, what happens? The viscosity of water increases. So initially, what happens? Here, this polymer has multi-point of contacts with the water you have many points of contacts with the water by this polymer so the viscosity is higher viscosity is increased the system is viscous now when you apply shear stress you apply shear stress has your dilated system sorry has your pseudoplastic system what is the other name for pseudoplastic system the other name for pseudoplastic system is shear thinning system if you apply shear it will become thin so what happens when you apply the shear stress this polymer the solvent polymer the polymer which took up the water it will leave the water it will get dehydrated and align in the direction of flow it will align in the direction of flow and it get dehydrated due to this what happens there is no much resistance built up in, within the system and the system will become thin Initially it is gel with multi point of contact Now when you apply shear stress as the polymers are aligning in the direction of flow it will become sol viscosity is less it will become sol and now we have less point of contact these polymer strands have less point of contact with the water molecules when you apply shear stress till now we are still till this we have studied in pseudoplastic system now what happens when I remove the shear stress that what is time dependent when I remove the shear stress shear stress is removed when I remove the shear stress what happens slowly slowly this polymer will try to come back to its original position when the polymer is aligned in the direction of flow and it has been dehydrated again it will try to gain back its water molecules it will swell and it will come to its original position like this now again due to this what happens again viscosity is increase again you have multi point of contact
So I just repeat what happened when you add polymer to water. The polymer has OH groups. It will absorb water molecules through hydrogen bonding. It will swell and it will cause viscous. It will increase the viscosity of water. Okay. When you apply shear stress, it is in gel form. When you apply shear stress, it will lose the viscosity. It will get dehydrated. It will align in the direction of O and decreases the viscosity. So viscosity degrees less point of contact. Initially it has more point of contact. Now it has less point of contact. Now when you leave the shear stress, when the applied shear stress is left. Slowly that polymer will gain back its original position. But here, if you compare the viscosity of initial and the final, you have given time for that uh, system to recover fully. The system has been recovered. But if you see the viscosity, if you measure the viscosity, for example, let's say viscosity of this system is 100 cv. Just for example, for example, viscosity of this one when you added polymer initially it is 100. When you apply shear stress, it loses its viscosity. Let's say its viscosity here is um, 60 CPS. When you remove the applied shear stress, slowly it will gain back to its original position. But this time, it will not get all of its viscosity. But some of its viscosity is lost. Let's say 90 CPS. So overall, what happened? Initially, it is so viscous. When you added the polymer, you applied the shear stress, it loses viscosity. Again, when you remove the shear stress, it will gain the viscosity. But overall, it has lost some consistency. Some consistency is lost. Now, in first, at uh, first I told you some definition. I just repeat the definition. The definition says for thixotropy, isothermal and comparative slow recovery of a system whose consistency is lost upon shearing. That was the definition. So how to remember this definition? Simple. See here. Isothermal provided the temperature is constant throughout the experiment. You assume that I am conducting the experiment in constant temperature. That is isothermal. Comparatively slow recovery. Compared to what? This system is recovering slowly compared to stressing. You are given shear stress. It has lose its viscosity suddenly. This is a fast process. This process is fast. And this process is slow. You apply the shear stress, it has lost its viscosity very fast, but it gained the viscosity slowly. So, isothermal, comparatively slow recovery of a system whose consistency is lost. See, it has lost its consistency even though after gain recovering fully. Even though you are given time, it has recovered fully, but the consistency is lost upon shearing. Why that consistency is lost? Because you have sheared it, so its consistency is lost. This is how you can remember the definition. I repeat the definition. Isothermal provided the temperature is constant. Comparatively slow recovery compared to what? Shear stress. It undergone stress very fast, but it records slowly. Comparatively slow recovery of a system whose consistency is lost upon shearing. This is how you can remember the definition very easy. That what thixotropy is. Now we can you can ask yourself where you can use this. It has many applications in pharmacy. Let's say if you want to manufacture or if you want to formulate a sustained release injection. So what we do in a sustained release injection? If the you have a drug, you dissolve the drug in the water, you made a solution. Now if you give this solution in the form of injection, what happens? The drug is already soluble. When you give the injection, the drug will go to blood very readily and it will act as the drug will go to blood very readily and it will have action is also very fast. But I want it to be a sustained release. So what should I do? I incorporate polymers in the injection. Now if I incorporate the polymer, what happens? You can see, I will show you the uh, video here. Just check that video. In this video it is showing in the injection when he is taking out that system, the system is actually gel while coming out, it is coming in the form of thin liquid then again when it is come back, it will again forming gel so this property is called as thixotropy that property we call it as thixotropy so what is, so come to my uh, what is the application part where I can apply this thixotropy property okay. 
consider I want to uh, formulate a sustained delete injection, sustained release injection. So I will incorporate polymer in that injection. Now the problem is that polymer is very thick and due to that polymer the injection will become thick. Now the syringe needle is very 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 small, the uh, space in the needle is very small. This thick injection has to pass through that needle and it has to go into the body. Now, due to is so viscous, it is very probable if, if it, it is not losing its viscosity when you are applying the injection, it is a help for the doctor as well as patient. So, if you incorporate thixotropic property in that injection, what happens when you apply the shear stress, the gel, this gel will transform to solve, the gel will become thin, and transform to solve, go through the needle and goes into the body, when it goes into the body, again slowly it will recover its consistency. Not up, but slowly it will recover its consistency. Due to that recovered consistency, now the gel will provide three dimensional structure there. Through that structure, the molecule, what, uh, drug molecule has to come out. So it will be a sustained release injection. And we have many applications like this. If you want an ointment to come out, okay, ointment is very thick within the tube. You want that to come out, when you apply the shear stress, this ointment will lose its consistency, come out through that small nozzle in, from the ointment and then when it come out, again it will gain back its consistency. So we don't want that ointment to lose its consistency when it come out. Okay. Again it will gain back its consistency. We have plenty of applications for thixotropy. Now considering this mechanism, how can you plot the graph for this thixotropy? So the mechanism says, When you apply shear stress, the system is losing its viscosity. Okay. When you leave the shear stress, the system will gain back its viscosity, but now it has less viscosity compared to the initial point. Again, again when you apply the shear stress, again it will lose its viscosity, again it will gain back, again it will lose its viscosity, again it will gain back. This is how you can draw a graph for thixotropy. This is the graph, you can easily draw for thixotropy if you know the mechanism of now after seeing thixotropy, we will see for negative thixotropy. We will see about negative thixotropy. Example for this is suspension in which there are less number of flocule and more number of deflocculated system particles. Example for this is suspension in which less flocules are there and more number of deflocculated particles are there. See? So what happens? We will see the mechanism for this. So the example says we have a suspension in which flocules are less as in B is a flocule, D is a flocule, D is a flocule and we have more number of deflocculated system particles compared to flocule. When you apply shear stress, when you apply shear stress, you are making this deflocculated particles to come close and form flocule. Due to your applied shear stress, the flocule, deflocculated particles will move fast, they will come close and they will form flocules. So when you apply shear stress, number of flocculated particles will increase. The number of flocculated particle in this. So now what I mean, initially it has less viscosity, now it has more viscosity because flocules are more, more resistance will build up within the system, so it is, its viscosity increases. If you keep on doing this, if you keep on applying shear stress, the number of flocules formed also increases. So as you keep on increasing the shear stress, the viscosity of the system also keep on increasing. Now how can I represent this in the graph? So 
So I said as you increase the shear stress, the viscosity also increases. So you increase the shear stress, viscosity increases. Again, increase the shear stress, viscosity increases. Again, it will gain back. Again, it will lose. Again, it will lose. Okay. So this how you can represent the graph for negative thickness. How can I read this graph? So when you apply shear stress, its viscosity increases. Multi point. So number of flocules forming also increases. When you leave the shear stress, that in that number of flocules form, some flocule will break and they will, it will lose the viscosity. Then again, it will gain the viscosity when you apply stress. Number of flocules are going to form more readily. So the graph is shifting towards right. In rheogram, if the graph is shifting towards left, it means it is losing its viscosity. The graph, graph is shifting towards right, it is gaining its viscosity. So the graph is shifting towards right, it is gaining the viscosity. But there is a limit. If you think that, okay, I will keep on increase the stresses, that thing will become thick, thick and thick. No. Once number of deflocculated particles form flocule, so it reaches its limit. Further, if even though you apply stresses, there will be no increase in viscosity. This is called your negative thixotropy. It is called negative thixotropy because in thixotropy, it loses the viscosity as you apply the shear stress. In negative thixotropy, sorry, in thixotropy, it will lose the viscosity as you apply the shear stress. In negative thixotropy, it will gain the viscosity as you apply the shear stress.